Hey everybody, hope and pray that you're doing well today as we come to our word from the word. And today, that word is conviction, conviction. Now, to catch you up to where we've been, uh, we a couple weeks ago, we were uh, talking about, even when we began in our August church series, we talked about um, there in the first chapter of Philippians, and Philippians, Philippians 1.19, uh, Paul says something there, and he, he's talking to the church, you know, and he says, look, it, it's by two things that have given me encouragement. And he says that one was prayer, and uh, we dealt with uh, prayer uh, one week, and, uh, and I'll put up to the links to all these videos as uh, I mentioned them too. Uh, but we talked about prayer uh, and kind of used the acronym of prayer, um, or the acrostic of prayer, rather, to talk about that. Uh, but then he also says, and he goes on, this is from Philippians 1.19, and he says, and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. Now, with that, um, you know, so we dealt with prayer. We dealt, we began dealing with the Holy Spirit. And uh, we spent, what, two weeks talking about just um, the answer to that first question, which was, is the Holy Spirit a person or a force? And uh, you can look back and see the answer that we came up with that. And that was not something we came up with, but something that God's word provided for us was the answer that, yes, indeed, he is uh, a person uh, to be that has personality traits. So we treat him as such. And you can go back and look at those. Um, so question number two, if you remember back from our original questions about the Holy Spirit, question number two is, uh, what is the Holy Spirit's role pre-conversion, in conversion and post-conversion? Um, so that's what we're going to be dealing with uh, probably over the next two weeks. Uh, and we'll kind of go through it. Um, we'll probably spend just today and tomorrow talking about his role before. Um, and then uh, a few days talking about in conversion. And then most of our time will be uh, kind of looking back even at some of the same things we've already mentioned in what the Holy Spirit's uh, role is uh, after we're converted or after we're saved. Uh, so today. Uh, we're back in John chapter 16, and if you remember, we talked about the Holy Spirit being an illuminator. Um, it's the same passage that we're going to deal with, and we talked about some of these things, but I'm going to look at it in a little bit different light uh, for the purpose of our conversation today. As always, I encourage you to be reading, uh, studying for yourself, and I, I want you to be looking. Don't just, okay, well, I'll wait and see what he says tomorrow. Now, I want you to be looking and see if you can find in Scripture. Um what the Spirit's role is in all these things. And, and even think back in your own personal walk and, and how the Spirit moved in your life before you accepted Christ and uh, even in that moment and what He's done since. Uh, as always, if you're joining us and you're an unbeliever and you, you've never placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I, first and foremost, let me encourage you, today can be that day of salvation. Uh, you just reach out to me, to another believer. We'd be glad to show you how you can accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. And then you will see how all these things we've been talking about, they'll, you'll see them then clearly. Um, but as we look today, John chapter 16, verses 7 through 11, and this is Jesus speaking. And he says, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away, that he was ascending back to heaven. Uh, and he says, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him uh, to you. And when he has come, and here's where we get the basis of our conviction today. Uh, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. And then he goes on to explain it. He says, of sin, because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness, because I um, lost my place just that quick. Of righteousness, because I go to my father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the ruler of this world is judged. So even as we look at that, um, I want us to just look at those three things that he just mentioned, that he convicts of sin, that he convicts of righteousness, and he convicts of judgment. And there again, you go back to the Illuminator video, we talked about some of this already, but I wanted to point out some other scriptures here. Okay, so first he convicts of sin. Uh, remember, this is all prior to conversion. So this is from a lost person's point of view, he convicts of sin. And so Jesus even talks about this when he talks to Nicodemus in John chapter 3, verse 18. He says, he who believes is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. And you might think, well, why? Well, it's because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. 
So the fact is, if we believe, then we're not condemned. But if you have, if you're listening and you have, uh, or even before you were born again, if you were not listening, if you were not um, uh, not believing in Jesus, then you were already condemned because the wages of sin is death, right? And so we know that that cost is specifically a death in hell, and and so he convicts of sin. Um, to get us to come to salvation. I mean, that's the whole point. He points out sin. Well, the second part of that is that he convicts of righteousness. Now, all these three, they all three go together. And I pray you'll see that when we get to the end. But um, it's kind of how does he convict of righteousness? Well, it's kind of as if the spirit is showing even unbelievers the way that they should be living. Now, it doesn't mean that they're going to accept it. It doesn't mean that they're going to believe it. But he's actually putting it out there so that they can see it. Um, This is where inherently people know right from wrong. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is showing them. Now, whether or not they choose to accept that, whether or not they choose to believe that that's actually right or wrong, the Holy Spirit of God is showing them and he is convicting them. Um, And we'll even talk about a little bit tomorrow in the the restraining force of the Holy Spirit from uh, the book of Thessalonians. And we've even talked about that before. Um, But just to to think about that, how he convicts of righteousness. I'm going to get sidetracked here. So think about the woman caught in adultery from John chapter 8, right? What does Jesus say? They catch this woman in adultery and then they're ready to stone her. And he just comes down and, you know, he's kind of, Playing in the dirt, right, is what everybody thinks. Drawing something, he's drawing something in the dirt, writing something in the dirt. And and here's all that he says, right, is simply this. He says, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Yeah, so he who has no sin, let him throw the first stone. And then you hear those stones hit the ground as, as all the accusers are dropping their stones and walking away. And man, there's a message just in that alone. But the the one person there who was able and um, was righteous enough to throw a stone at her because she was she was caught in sin and the punishment of sin is death. And so the one that could convict her uh, and uh, really ultimately condemn her to death was Jesus. So the only one that could throw a stone, I love this statement, the only one that could throw a stone didn't because he was the only one that was without sin. But he chose not to throw a stone. He used this as an opportunity uh, to witness to this lady and to this woman and, and to everyone else who was around. But see, in the same way that Jesus did that in his earthly ministry, that's the same way that the Holy Spirit moves today. That he convicts if people will listen. He convicts of righteousness when they know that they shouldn't be condemning others because they're flawed. They're sinful. And see, that kind of comes into the third part where he says that he convicts, that the Holy Spirit convicts of um, judgment. And and see, the the point is that he wants people to see that sin and Satan have already been judged. What did Jesus say there on the cross? Uh, John chapter uh, 19, verse 30, right there, he says, it is finished, right? It is finished. To tell us that, he says, he doesn't say, and I I always love this application. he He doesn't say, I am finished, but he says, it is finished. The, the plan that was set in place there in, in Genesis has all this time been working together to according to God's plan and his purpose for at this moment for the, the plan to be complete, for the seal kind of to be put on the judgment uh, of Satan and of sin ultimately. And the point is, is that even in that, the Holy Spirit is showing us that, look, Satan and, and sin have already been judged. And if you continue to live in your sin, you too will face the same fate. And that's what the Spirit is always pointing back to. See, as he convicts of sin and righteousness and shows right from wrong, in that he's showing everyone, but specifically is what we're talking about his role pre-conversion, he's showing unbelievers that if they continue in that path, then they too will be judged and that judgment will end up with an eternity in hell. So the application for us today is first, if you're an unbeliever, Right. You need to understand that. Or maybe I'll just ask it this way. Do you see your sin compared to the righteousness and holiness of God? And do you see that that same sin is what's going to end up condemning you to a life, uh, an eternity in hell? 
if you don't turn and repent of that sin and, and turn your eyes upon Jesus. Right. Come to him. Accept him as your personal Lord and Savior and believe in him. Again, I encourage you, if that's you today, just reach out to me or to another believer. We'd be glad to show you how you can accept him as your personal Lord and Savior. But then for the believer that's here today, you say, OK, well, that was his role pre-conversion. Here's what I'm going to. You thought you were going to get off on this, that you were going to be able to skate by without me asking you something. But here's my question for you. If you're a believer today, do you really think that the Holy Spirit did all of this work pre-conversion, that, that he worked to uh, convict of sin, of righteousness and of judgment? That he did all of that to lead you to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Just for you to go back to your old way of living. Do you really think the Holy Spirit did all that? Just so you could go back to your old ways. And I think you know the answer to that question. Of course he didn't. And see, that's why he comes to convict. And that's why even, even though that is his role pre-conversion, you know as well as I do, it's also part of his role post-conversion is to convict us of the error of our ways and our sinful ways so that we'll repent and get back in that right relationship with God. So my closing question for you today is this. If the Spirit is convicting you today, if you're an unbeliever and he's convicting you that you need to turn to him, or you're a believer uh, walking at that guilty distance, or there's some sin in your life and he's convicting you of it today, either case, unbeliever or believer, here's what you need to do. You need to act on it. You need to repent and turn to Jesus today. God bless you. And I pray you have a great, great day.